This one got hit down low here in the trunk floor. I have a Toyota Camry here. This one got hit down low here in the trunk floor and destroyed the trunk floor. See, it's completely crushed throughout that area. Also the rear body panel. So it's gonna be getting both of those new. I have the new trunk floor here and then the new back panel right here. And then whenever everything shifted, it shifted enough to actually cause a buckle in each quarter panel. Real minor, but it did buckle them from everything shifting and it put some tension on both of those quarter panels and caused them to buckle. Today's episode of Inside the Body Shop is brought to you by Finish Master. Finish Master is one of the leading national distributors of paint coatings and related materials for the automotive and industrial finishing industries. With multiple distribution centers and branches all over the country, Finish Master provides a nationwide coverage, but they still give you that hometown service. They treat their customers like family because that's the way it should be. Whether you are a do-it-yourselfer in the garage building that hot rod or you're an auto body shop looking for a company to partner with to not only provide you all the materials you need to keep your business operating, but also the training and support behind those materials. If any issues were to arise, whatever it might be, Finish Master's here to help. They're here to train you. They're here to support you and keep your business up and running, operating efficiently and smoothly. Finish Master also has an exclusive brand called Smart. Smart has 450 SKUs of all different products from sandpapers to undercoats to body fillers, whatever it might be, Smart has just about every product you would need to build that restoration or fix that collision repair. Smart's a brand for you, not only high quality, but also cost effective. Finish Master is here to help from start to finish. Let's get back to the program. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put this car in clamps, clamp it down to the bench, and I'm gonna make some measurements back here to see where the frame's sitting, make sure it's not off. Then after that, I will go ahead and get this rear body panel and trunk floor cut out and start fitting my new parts up. So this is the measuring turtle that sits on this track underneath here. And what I'll do is I'll match. I'll go to five points in the center of the car and that will match this to the vehicle. Then I could come back here and measure these points. Now the measuring system is matched to the vehicle so I can come here to the back and I can see if any of these points are off in the rear. So this is just measuring a few millimeters high. So I'm gonna make just a couple quick pulls on this and I'm gonna pull this damage out and down. Since all of this is getting replaced, I'm just gonna drill a hole and then I'm gonna put a plate on the back side and I'm gonna use that to pull off of.
All right, those poles brought everything down just a few millimeters, and now it's measuring out perfectly within spec. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting this rear body panel off. And when I get that out of the way, then I'll dive into the floor pan. Every time before I cut a rear body panel off, I go through and I look at the new panel and I see how many layers of metal. Because depending on the panel, some of them are de designed differently. And some of them will have double layers because they'll have two pieces sandwiched together. So that tells me I have to grind through two layers of metal. This one, however, is just single layered almost all the way around except for right here and then where this plate's at. So that way I know how many layers I need to cut through. I'm gonna go ahead and get into cutting out this floor pan. First, these plates have the floor pan sandwiched between the frame rail and the plate. So I drill these off to get these out of the way. And then I'll start cutting the floor. This is the seam going all the way around right here. And I'll get that floor pan cut out. So I marked all where all my plug welds are gonna go on this new floor pan. I'm gonna go ahead and make all my holes for the welds.
I'm gonna sit this floor in here. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna mark where all my plug welds go and I'm gonna clean just those spots down to bare metal. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this floor in there and get it sitting where it's supposed to and I'm going to start welding it in. Now once this is all done, I'm going to give it to our mechanic and we're going to have to drop the suspension down so I can get up in here and seal up the seam. Otherwise moisture will get up in there and cause it to start rusting at that seam and there's no way to get to it with all the suspension under there. I went ahead and these are some, this is an old welding blanket that was all torn up that I cut some small pieces out of and I tucked that up in here just to protect everything underneath there. There it is, fitting very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my MIG plug welds all the way around and get the floor wrapped up. Then I will get into fitting up the rear body panel and whenever I fit that, I'll have to fit my tail lights and the trunk lid and make sure everything in the whole back end's fitting correctly. I went ahead and matched the measuring system back to the car. Since I had moved this ladder, I had to recenter the car to the measuring system. And I'm gonna come back here to the back and I can measure these points and see if I need to shift this in it at all. The computer is telling me that this panel is sitting just a few millimeters too far to the left. So I'm gonna shift it over, just a hair over that way. This one is measuring out perfectly now, so everything's sitting where it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and I gotta fit up the tail lights and fit up the lights in the trunk lid and make sure everything fits correctly when I shut the trunk lid and latch it and check the seal and everything. And once I check all that, then I will go ahead and start welding this rear body panel on and get this one finished up. Now, I have this thing all fitting together and the trunk shuts and latches and seals very nice. My lights, my lights line up nice and flush and even and the gaps look good. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pull this one back apart and get this back panel welded on.
So you can see here, this old floor has sound deadening pads that go on the bottom center of it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean off this new trunk floor and I'm gonna put some paint down in this bottom section so I could go ahead and lay out the sound deadening pads and get that part finished up. Then whenever our paint department paints this trunk floor, they get to spray right over all of it. Now these are just some generic sound deadening pads I have here. I use this heat lamp to warm them up, make them more pliable, and it also makes them stick a lot better. So I just realized that as I was doing those sound deadening pads that this bracket did not come on the new floor. This is what bolts down your spare tire. So I'm going to drill out these four spot welds and I'm going to transfer that over and weld that down to that floor. So I just about have this one wrapped up. I'm at the point now that I'm gonna give this to our mechanic so he could put it up on a two post lift because there's the front, the front seam on the trunk floor has to be sealed up and the suspension, all the suspension has to be dropped loose in order to get up to that seam to seal it. So I'm gonna give this to our mechanic, let him drop that loose, then I will get up in there tomorrow and get that seam sealed up and finish up the underside. Then after that, I will give this to Eric to do the little bit of glaze work on both quarter panels and it will be ready for paint. That's a wrap.